Let's see what's happening in Chili Creek. Hey Anasa, nice to see you. And yeah, he has a holiday too. Apparently it's not uh, in the US, All Hallows Eve. How are you? How's it going? Ah. Uh, I think we're kind of too late probably for the cleric. Commander! The cleric is lying on the riverbank. The sand is soaked with his blood. Save! Save, Melissa! Ah, if we took the swarm mythic path, we could devour the fishermen. Yikes. What happened to you? This village, so beautiful, so peaceful, so many good people living here. But something has been worrying me since the day I came here. I couldn't stop thinking about all the strange rituals in the grove and all the weird conversations about firstborn being doomed to die. I tried not to think too much about it. If the villagers were not willing to embrace the faith of Aristotle, I didn't want to appear judgmental. But I was wrong. I, I should have trusted my instincts. There's great evil at work in this village. When Melissa and I decided to get married, she told me that she wanted to do it under the rights of Aristotle. I hadn't asked her to do that, but she already made up her mind. It was entirely her decision. She asked me not to tell Markle about it, and we tried to keep things quiet, but he found out about it anyway. Well, he grew more and more gloomy with every passing day. I did not understand what was going on until Melissa finally told me the truth, something that everyone else in the city knew except for me. Locals perform their wedding rites upstream from the isle on the boat. The bride is supposed to take off her wreath and send it floating down the stream where she recites a horrible, profane oath that I do not wish to repeat. Hmm, very close, closely connected to the river and everything. You see, when she gives away her wreath, she also promised to give her firstborn to the river. Ah. Body, mind and soul. It, it might not happen right away, it might take years, but in the end, the river will always takes what belongs to it. And Markle, he's a few minutes older than Melissa. Yikes, so they're always offering the firstborn to the river and still call it benevolent. Ugh. Oh, and that means that Markle the firstborn but wasn't offered. Do you see? dying man whispers hoarsely. You can hear the anguish in his voice. The people of Chili Creek believe that the worship that they worship the river, but these rites are not druidic in nature. They are not the rituals of the green faith or the cultic practices of some minor deity. No, this malevolent force, whatever it is, has a physical presence in this world. Marco lost his mind. His parents swore to give him to this monster and now it has deprived him of his sanity. He took Melissa to the isle, the probably where the monster lives and where sacrifices to it are made. If he's the firstborn, why is he sacrificing someone else and not the... I don't know, river spirit is going to just take him back. Yikes. Oh, but that sounds like a nice, nice day, Alistair. <laughs> I also slept forever today. <laughs> so the locals sacrifice their firstborns to the river, and the bridal reef is part of the ritual? Not exactly. The locals are decent people. They don't kill their children with their own hands. The reef is a sign of obedience. The future parents agree that the river can take their firstborns whenever it wants. Ah. It has the right to take their bodies, or their minds. It can summon them at any time and demand services from them. And sometimes, River exercises that right. Really sounds like some evil entity behind that. Ah, I remember this now, I always thought this village was odd. Yeah, definitely. Also that they are so secret about everything. I mean, considering he's dying, he can talk a lot. <laughs> There's more. Marco was the firstborn son, the older twin. 
When he did this to me, he wasn't himself anymore. I believe that the river took control of him. Whatever monster the locals worship has been controlling his thoughts and actions. You need help. No, it is too late for me. I can already hear Aristos hunting horn. My god is waiting for me. All I ask is that you save my wife. My journey through this world. Cleric can barely speak. He coughs up blood, continues weakly. My journey is over. What must I do to save Melissa? Markle took her to Pikefin. It's an isle in the middle of the river. You can see it from here. Indeed, if you look closely, you can see a small, rocky isle, partially obscured by the river mist. Something drove him insane. The evil has controlled this village for all these years. It lives on this isle. Take one of the boats from the village and set her free. I don't think I have to ask who did that. Oh well, Jono. Rest in peace. Safe. Her. <laughs> Cleric's breath is shallow and wrecked, his quivering lips go still, his eyes close, and he passes away to his god. Mm. It would be nice to be able to revive him, but I see that being able to revive uh, each and every NPC would be... The glory of the yikes. Plan. Would be uh, quite a challenge to program. But then I guess, like, um, they don't know how they are. all those monsters which were very easily fought and defeated. Okay, that was also easy. It's maybe due to the protection of the river. And there's a skeleton. The question is now, like, how to get to the isle? Can we just take a boat? Let's see what we can get another obstacle. I guess the river's striking back. But I mean, level 16, AC 24, yeah. Easy. Can we take a boat? We can sail to the islands. What is more dangerous, the unpredictability of nature or the hostile interventions of another? The malevolent force hiding on this isle is as wild, volatile and ruthless as the natural world, but it also has a cunning intelligence, a devious and vindictive desire to keep away unwanted visitors. As soon as the commander reaches for the oars, the water around the boat turns into a thick sheet of ice that freezes the vessel in place. What will the commander do now? Ah, oh, which sounds the coolest? The commander jumps into a nearby boat and pushes it away from the shore before it freezes too. The commander swiftly leaps into a different boat and pulls it away from the shore. The cold ice suddenly melts away, releasing the banks of the river from his rigid grasp. The commander sets off for the shore of the small, rocky isle, but his journey does not go unnoticed, and it seems that someone on the isle does not like uninvited guests. I get the entity we're searching. <laughs> Suddenly, the mist that rises from the surface over the river thickens into a dense cloud of fog. It blinds the commander and obscures his surroundings. Where's the shore? Where's the isle? The fog is so thick, the commander cannot even see the oar he's holding in his hands. What will the commander do now that he's blinded by fog? What I note, just notice is that you never get like, okay, use that kind of spell to master the situation. I mean, of course, sometimes there's a, like a, an arcana check, but you can never use, I don't know, isn't there something like blindsight, like a spell for blindsight, but probably not far enough to see out of the boat, but still. Ah. The commander chooses to close his eyes. The sound of running water, the splash of a fish, the wind rustling through the branches of the forest, the sound of a bird chirping on a shore far away. All of these sounds paint a picture in the commander's mind that no fog can hide. A light breeze slowly begins to dissipate the cloud of fog. The boat is headed straight toward the island. It will not be long before the commander reaches the black, rocky shore of the pike fin.
The rocky isle is desolate and bare. Blue-gray lichen and a few sparse straggling weeds are all that survive on this black rocky shore. Further inland, the entrance to a cave gaves open like a toothless mound. Suddenly, a violent gust of wind sweeps out from the entrance of the cave toward the river, and the water, which was calm only moments ago, begins to swell into massive, foaming waves that threaten to smash the boat into the boulders along the coast. How will the commander reach the shore? Yeah, it would be good like Baldur's Gate 3 if like you could use spells to clear certain areas or enemies like freezing the river, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because you have so many different spells and it would give them like more of the utility aspect. But I mean, same goes for like, okay, I have to do like a check. I want to use like any supporting spell for that. Uh, yeah, supporting spell for that to be able to achieve that. Would be nice. Mando steers the boat through the waves and navigates around the rocks with a firm and skillful hand. The boat is tossed about relentlessly by the waves. It is flung into the air and nearly dashed to pieces on the rocks. However, the commander manages to steer the flimsy vessel away from collision and out of danger. The moment the boat touches the shore, the storm subsides as suddenly as it started. It is hard to believe that only moments ago, this calm, lazy river was a maelstrom of raging waves and rushing currents. The air is still and peaceful, and the howling gales and roaring winds have completely subsided. The isle looks calm, but so did the river. Looks can be deceiving. The lichen covered black boulders along the shore do not look like they have been ever disturbed. It would be easy to assume this isle was inhabited. There are no bones or traces of any rituals, but after moving further inland, the commander sees Marco's boat. It has been carefully pulled up onto the shore beyond the reach of the waves. Noises can be heard from within the cave ahead. There's a shrill, angry voice, followed by the sound of a woman's scream. Ah, let's hurry. Ooh, frozen cave. Thankfully, this is not Divinity, or even in one, so we can't slip on the ice and get stuck in an endless. Ah, wrong character. Ask nicely. Hold it. Pretty good, aren't yeah, I? That's how you do it. And my tail is twitching. Must be a sign. Who traps a cave of this ice? This is my kind of work. Guess we'll find out. Might be trap. Might be treasure. Ooh. Ooh. This is my kind of work. Ah. My tail is twitching. It's just wondering how to disarm this one. Pretty good, aren't I? Okay, this we can call the rest of the work. party. I wonder who's hiding. If it's like an is evil fae or something, like a hag or an elemental or like a devil or something. Lorraine, I think it's a hack. Look at those teeth. Hmm. Oh, it's not one hack, it's three. The cave is cold and dark. The ground is covered in fog, and an icy current of air flows toward you from the depths of the cave. Water drifts from the ceiling, and dim lanterns cast grotesque shadows on the walls. All oh, these years we've been worshipping. Ah, oh no, it's Melissa. It's not one of the hacks. Oh, all oh, these years we've been worshipping. The three of you. All our praise, prayers to the icy rill. All our sacrifices. Oh, gods and our children. It's been you the whole time. Melissa is huddled in a corner, clasping a withered wreath of grass and flowers to her chest. It looks like she's been crying. Standing in front of her are three horrifying old hacks. Markle sits at their feet like a faithful dog. And what's so wrong with us, child? The old woman's skin is even whiter than her hair, and brief hangs in the air like an icy mist. Her voice is kind, but her gentle words lack sincerity. Beneath her friendly exterior, she's as cold and ruthless as ice. We did not wish to bring any harm to you or your brother, but unfortunately you have not given us what we are owed. 
deliver to the river is rightfully hers, and both of you can leave in peace. You are always too soft, Lavixia. This hag's voice sounds like the roar of the wind during a storm. Her skin is covered in spidery blue veins, and her eyes flash like lightning. Do what you're told, lass. Hand over the grief and face the consequences. You won't escape us. You can run, but you can't hide from all the tinder. Speaking of. Lurida, Levixia, my sisters. Do you hear me? Do you know what is destined to happen? Must happen. This old woman speaks in a whisper. Maybe I should read those descriptions first. Her blind eyes are as cloudy as the fog on the river, but she turns and points a finger at you resolutely. Look who has arrived! This one whose face was revealed to us in the dark waters. He's arrived already. Well, that's a surprise. The old woman plucks approvingly. We disliked uninvited guests, but you are clearly strong, agile and smart. We appreciate those qualities in a person. Very well, since you're here, you might as well come in. Oh, we could try to persuade Melissa to just give him, give them her wreath. I mean, I would like to try to kill them <laughs> to end their reign. Michael, what's wrong with you? Ixia reaches down to give the man at her feet a pat on the head. He's absolutely fine. He's a good boy, an obedient boy. He respects his elders, never talks back, and has respect for his mother river. Isn't that so? Michael's face is contorted in pain. You can see the desperation in his eyes as he struggles against the power that has seized control of his mind. Help me. Save my sister from me. The river will take. The river always takes what belongs to her. Michael, resist them. Don't let them control you. You must be strong for your sister. I'm really sure if that can help against, like... Especially if you kind of strike a deal with them. But let's see. Sister, my little sister, I, I shouldn't. I, I won't let them. Wait, what's going on? Are you trying to rebel against us, boy? Don't forget you will belong to us as long as you live. You cannot get rid of us, no matter how hard you try. You just say the word and you will be under our control. Oh, nice. Oh, not so nice. Michael grabs a stone from the cave floor and attacks the hack. You hear a disgusting crunching sound as Michael smashes the rock into the hack's arm. The hack shrieks and lashes out at the man, dealing him a powerful blow that causes him to fall on the floor, unconscious. Okay, so we can maybe still save him. Kill them, sisters. No one leaves this place alive. Ugh. Okay, well, let's hope they don't attack those two. Uh, AC42, AC42. That seems to be their thing. Oh. So, let's prepare for that. Uh, I always have to look where this damn Burst of Glory spell is. Where is it? You are prayer. Oh, I always forget that. Is it this? Ah, this one. Okay, uh, defense vitals. I think haste is also in order. Go. Just to make sure what, that we actually hit them. You know. Go back. We are targeted. Come on. boost and hitting is just as I My head. Vanessa, are you alright? Let's get out of here, hurry. Let's get back to the village as soon as we can. This accursed cave makes me sick. Interesting that they don't talk to us. Well, you're welcome for saving you. Let's see what things they have. Used to oldest. Hex demise. 
Uh, saving throws against hexes and necrons you. Mm. Can't be equipped. Why not? Can't I equip this one? Ah, wrong slot. That's easy. Amulet of natural armor. I mean. That one. And I think those golden ring of protectors might also come in handy. No, ah, I mean it's worse than plus five. For you, this is a nice ring. For you, and that's it. Hmm. It was kind of easier than I expected, I but I take something. it. I have to say, I'm curious about like how the village reacts. Cause I don't know if they believe us or if they're like, "Oh, is you killed treasure? the river." And then freak out. Let's see. Uh, thank you for saving us from those monsters. I, I didn't think I was going to survive. And Marco, I thought I'd lost him forever. Sister, forgive me. I've no excuse for my actions. It's not your fault, I guess. Those hacks were controlling your mind, weren't they? They would never have ensnared me if I had not been such an easy target. I really did not like Jarnal. I was against your marriage, and the ex used that to control me. Lester looks down. After a while, she answers softly. I don't know if I will ever be able to really forgive you, but you're the only family I have now. Uh, it would have been a happy ending if we were able to save Jarnal. Mm -hmm. Not really many happy endings in this game so far. Vanessa, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. I loved him so much, I thought we had a life ahead of us. She wipes her eyes. Oh. So, Marco, are you really free from the evil influence of the Hex? But I mean, they're dead, so... I, I am... The Hex are dead. I'm my own man now. Thank you. Did you tell the villagers the truth? Do they know that they have been worshipping Hex this whole time? I did, but they don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Unless I cast a glance toward the village and shakes her hand bitterly. They don't want to believe it. They say it must have been a nightmare or that Marco drank too much. They come up with dozens of different explanations because the truth is just too terrible to bear. They keep practicing their rites. I, I wouldn't be surprised if another nasty creature comes to live on the pig fen in a couple of years. I'm sure there are plenty of foul things that would gladly prey on these villagers and accept their sacrifices. I I can't live among these people anymore. Yikes, that they're still willing to throw their children into the river. Ugh. So what are you the two of you going to do next? I I will bury my husband in the ground, and then I leave. I go wherever the wind takes me, as long as it's far away from this river. I never want to see this place again. We are experienced travelers. We'll be fine wherever we go. We head along the southern river toward the river kingdoms, and then we find somewhere to settle. What a bitter ending. So, well, I guess it's time to say farewell. Yes. Lesser tries to smile. I'll I pray to Aristotle for you every day. Here, take this. This is an old family heirloom. I don't know how many generations it's been in our family, but now I want you to have it. Take it as a sign of my gratitude. I hope it will help you on your path to victory. Lawmaster's Rope. Thank you for everything. Farewell. I wonder if we can go to the village and smack some sense into them. But I don't think so, especially because they're all just villagers you can't really talk to. How terrible! A murder! Nothing like that has ever happened in our village before. I can uh, handle it. I think they're all just villagers wanting to believe that nothing changed. Mm. 
Oh well, we tried. Oh boy. Huh? They did. Why? I mean, we killed the hacks. Why are there still water elementals around? Hmm. Maybe you just conjure it before and don't vanish. The caster dies. So. Every case of harvest time, we read that one. So, that was Chili Creek. I wonder if anything would happen if we went to Canabri, but I don't think so. Um, hmm. Let's just begin to travel back. And I think tomorrow we should be able to hire our general again, shouldn't we? My general? Ah, there she is again. Finally. Ah, except. Yeah. Okay. What is happening? I am a little confused. Okay. Come on. Hmm. Okay, it worked. It is still kind of buggy, but whatever. Didn't she also have like Master of Maneuver? Increase the maximum size of army by one unit? Why can't she still just have three? Let's just wait a day or something and see if it's going to work out then. Quite the weird bug. Would you look at that? I've made it through the another day without being killed or eaten, and without looking any more decrepit than at yesterday. Not too shabby for a mongrel. <laughs> Just lower your standards and every day will be an awesome day. Okay. Let's try this again. Yeah, one of five. Don't ask me why that was so buggy. Champions, marksmen, paladins, beerers and rangers. Let's go and just recruit some more. Church guards and hardened veterans. Oh, give me luck. Nope. Hmm. What power level are you? Level 9. I think... I would wait until we have more troops, because, I mean... Those battles seem to be all a little bit harder. Yeah. Oh, there's another demon army approaching. Uh, this one, I think. So, I take back what I said, and we're just going to go to them. So otherwise we'll lose an outpost, and I kind of don't want that. I think it was that one that moved. Let's see. See if there's anything else going on. Of course, help. So. The fate of the attractive impulse. Interesting. So many things we could do. 
Chanting voice. Mm. Uh, mostly seem to be uh, relics. And it's strength with some diplomatic connections. Defenders of freedom. Yeah, Moyama Azata seems also like a nice thing. Enchanting voice. One of the units ran into a monster with a hundred female heads. They were singing in sweet voices, and the singing was putting both crusaders and demons to sleep. One deaf knight slew the creature, but even deaf did not silence the heads. The soldiers cut off one of them, gagged it, and brought it to resin. What should be done with this head? Sell it? Music of the demons? Used against the demon sounds smart. Ah, there would also be a trickster option and a Wenwag option. Soldiers pass the head over to one of the generals to use his enchanting singing in battle. Sleeping demons will not be able to fight back. Ooh, Wolf wants to talk. Next thing I want to do is to go to the Hell Knight outpost. Oh, maybe to Resin just to get away, get rid of the corruption. It must be a pain to have to. It must be a pain having to cut a hole in every pair of pants for your tail. For once, I actually feel lucky compared to somebody else. It ain't just the making of a hole. I need to stitch it. The whole seam doesn't split. That's why I learned to sue my taste blessing in disguise. Wolf can sue. Nice. Ah, and we can also go back to the island. Then let's do that first. Changing my plans every second. 